So Manu, you're going to take us through the steps of what you can do now, what you can do in the long term, what you can do during the retreat, and maybe some other things as well. Mm -hmm. So before we start with that, can you quickly explain what really is a retreat? What do we do on a retreat? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it. That's great. I, I, I love that you asked me this question because, you know, I've been working in the retreat uh, sector. I've been teaching retreats. And sometimes there is, I, I give for granted that everyone knows what is a retreat, but sometimes I understood also over the last few few months that some people are a little bit confused when you say retreat because it can be like a very broad term. Mm -hmm. It could be a retreat center. When when you talk about retreats, it could be a retreat center. But in this case, we are not talking about a, a, the retreat center per se. We are talking about the experience, the experience yeah. of a retreat. A retreat is the act of withdrawing from you know from your daily life uh, from your day-to-day -day duties from your routine and just spend some time in some traditionally secluded or isolated place where you can spend some time doing some sort of spiritual practice it could be yoga there is any sort of retreat you know you could do from yoga to dance to horse riding but of course in this case we are focusing on yoga retreats mm -hmm. so that would be it. just spending some time in some beautiful location having amazing food having time with your teacher learning perhaps taking a couple of classes a day and then also resting which is also a really important part so i'm talking to you i have this guy over here which is biting this <laughs> well i hope doesn't create any inter interference oh god they're biting yeah. the cable so the they're biting the cable yes <laughs> I'm, I'm basically i'm in my friend's house and she has a lot of cats so they might be around so <laughs> please bear with me <laughs> yes absolutely they're only bringing fun to the to the uh, to the interview today yeah. So amazing. I think this is a really great definition. It really means to just get out of that comfort of your home, the routine, the daily things that you're always worrying about and surrender to something that in a place where you can really rest, reconnect to yourself, charge your batteries, as I like to say, and, and also connect with other people like your teachers and people that are going to the retreat. Awesome. All right. So let's dive in. What can we do right now to prepare for, in the future, maybe hosting a retreat? What are the steps that we need to go through? Okay, so let's dive in. So the first thing, and this is probably, Annie, this is going to go for the, for the teachers who are watching this, this video right now, and they are at the beginning of their teaching journey. Obviously, the the first thing they should do is to gain teaching experience. Yeah. This is something that I also shared the last time we had a live on Instagram. This is so important. It's going to help you to find your niche or to define your voice as a, teach as a teacher. Yeah. We talked about that uh, a couple of weeks ago. But also, it's going to give you that first-hand experience teaching so that you know like gaining experience this is how you're going to to connect with people this is how you are going to connect with the students this is how you're going to learn and this is how you are going to become a good teacher mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. and this is so important because having experience not only helps you to develop your voice to feel like you actually know what you're doing but it also, and, and make you feel really confident in what you're doing, because when you're hosting a retreat, you obviously want to come prepared and mm -hmm. feel like I've got this, I can actually teach these people. But like you said, it also helps you to already expand your network of students, of clients and people that could possibly come to your retreat. So what, what kind of advice do you have in terms of that? Because I, I, I assume we need to stay in touch with these people. We need to foster and to nurture these relationships. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice regarding, regarding connecting with these people? Yeah. 
Yeah, because for example, I, I used to work in uh, in a studio in Mexico, a really mm -hmm. nice place. I had really, really nice students, but it was kind of like a touristy place and people would go there for two or three weeks, maybe the, to stay the whole winter, but mm -hmm. then I would never see them again. And right. even though I had a really great rela relationship with them at the studio, that was the only place I connected with them. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm glad that you asked me this question, Annie, because I, I had a very similar experience, which is I, I worked for many years in a yoga retreat. And so you get people coming in and out every week. Yeah. And the thing is, for you, I, I don't want to sound like bad with this, but for you, it's like sometimes it's almost like kind of this flow of people coming in and coming out. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to keep memorizing about everyone. Yeah. But actually, from the other side, for people who come to the retreat, like just spending some week with you practicing yoga, that is something that might be like a meaningful experience for them. And they are going to remember you. Absolutely. So from your side, there is this flow of people that you see coming in and coming out. From their side, actually, they have a great memory of that time. They, they went to Mexico and they spent some time teaching with you and they remember that yoga teacher. So the best thing and something that I found is very useful is that if you have that opportunity to be exposed, to be teaching people, mm -hmm. obviously what I always ask is like find a way to keep in touch with them. And uh, if, we, if that is possible to do it, because I know the easiest way would be social media, right? We yeah. are all in social media and people can follow you on social media, but we also know that social media, it's actually not the more secure place to, to keep your people. So what I would say in order to nurture those relationship uh, would be to keep connected with, uh, with your students. And I would say my number one would be via email. Mm -hmm. But if you are not email, I know that many yoga teachers still don't have an email list, which is something that I really recommend. But I know for some, they are taking it one step at the time and maybe they are not there yet i would say if you don't have a way to connect with them with your students and with all of these people via email right now at least have the phone have something yeah. you know <laughs> because this is how and this take us to our second point Annie, which is this is how you're going to nurture those relationships you know with uh with uh, and it's, it's going to be like once you have a contact with them, mm -hmm. this is how you can keep nurturing them. Otherwise, you know, that relationship, they're going to have that memory of you teaching a retreat and perhaps they're not going to know anything about you in the future. So see if there is a way to keep connected with those people. I know this sometimes can be a little bit tricky, depends where you work. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, some places, if you say you are working for some yoga studio or for some yoga retreat, some places are going to be totally fine with you sharing a business card, personal business card or something where people can find your email or, or ask people to leave their emails. Some places are not going to be okay with that. So what I would recommend is to be transparent with the place that you are working and tell them, hey, and ask them directly, is it possible that I share, um, you know, that I share my email with, with the students? Is that okay? And, you know, if they say yes, that's fine. So you can find, you know, you can just like kind of uh, ask them for an email at the end of the class if they enjoy the class and they want to keep in touch with you. Or you can do like a little, you know, old school little business card with your email address and, and ask them to, to send them an email or something like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Exactly. It's so important that we have something else than just Instagram and Facebook because, mm -hmm. and we spoke about this during the summit as well, but Instagram and Facebook are things that could disappear and if Instagram decides to to quit or if there is another like what, what, what was it did like two it's years off. ago yeah exactly if we just can't <laughs> go online anymore oh know? the glitch the glitch yeah. there was yeah exactly 
-hmm. So if, if there is no access to Instagram or Facebook anymore, we suddenly lose all these contacts and those are your clients, your students and the persons that you're serving, eventually the persons that you are actually making a living from. So it's important that we have their email addresses and that we have a way to actually stay in touch with them. Um, I assume as well that if you want to host a retreat and you've got some people in your community that like you and they, want to, they know you, they trust you, they're ready to actually go on this retreat with you, we need to keep nurturing them. We mm -hmm. need to like having their email address is one thing, but how do we actually stay in touch, have them updated about everything and not let them forget about you in the meantime. Mm -hmm. And I love that you bring that up. I love that you bring up people in your community because seriously, sometimes this is so underrated. Mm -hmm. so I know we constantly think about, you know, how can I reach more people? Which of course, we all want to reach more people and, uh, and it's important to reach and expand. But actually, in my experience, most of the people who bought for me, be it a retreat, a course, a workshop, whatever I did in the past, most of them, it's like they are repeater people. Yeah. <laughs> people that they know me, that they came to a class, you know, and then when I bring something, they, they, they're they going to be the first ones to jump in. So, yeah, absolutely. Coming back to your point, once those people have practiced with you, have spent some time with you, just keep nurturing them. You know, I would say, of course, via email, if possible, you know, you have recorded that video in which you are sharing a new sequence or perhaps some tips that they can apply in their practice. Share them. Yeah. Let them know. The first people to know about all of the things that, that, that you're doing and everything are those people who already uh, practiced with you before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's important to actually foster, to nurture it and to actually just stay in touch with them. I wouldn't say on a daily basis, that's a bit intense, but tell them about updates, about classes, events, on things that you're doing, even share things of your personal life, because that really creates a way for them to connect with you and to resonate with you. And like you said, the people that have been working with you before are more likely to, to keep working with you than people that have no clue about you. So mm -hmm. foster those relationships. Absolutely. Are there any other things that you can do now before you already host retreat or start thinking about doing them? Mm -hmm, exactly. So those are the things we, we can all do now, which is we, we say we can start getting experience if, if you are a new yoga teacher. Um, uh, we can keep connected uh, with our students, everyone who comes to our classes via ideally email but if not email perhaps a whatsapp group or some way to connect with them yeah, and nice. then keep growing keep creating and growing that community and nurturing them those are the three main key points that i wanted to to share today with you that i think every yoga teacher can start doing right now no excuses <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. There's no excuse to that. So everyone, if you're watching, I see that we've got Ajaria here and Sarah and I do and Diana. Everyone, if you have questions about this, write them in the chat because I see that I do is going to host their own retreat uh, next spring. But she imagined hosting international retreats in the future. Fantastic. So keep watching. Then Sarah is doing her first retreat in Mallorca this October. So this sounds very interesting. That sounds super exciting. Sarah, tell us what type of, type of retreat are you going to host? Where and when is it going to be? Because I love Mallorca. <laughs> I really love going there. And then Ajaya, thank you for the clarification, getting teaching experience before doing a retreat. Absolutely, really important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then, we have teaching experience, we've got a community, we've got email lists or some way to actually stay in touch with the people that could possibly go to the retreat. Mm -hmm. What are the next steps? Okay, so now we're going to look into the medium 
long term. So let's say the long term would be the moment you start teaching your retreat. So the meet, let's look at from now to the next, I don't know, it will vary for every teacher, but let's say over the next um, one year, two years, what are the things that we can start doing? And the first thing would be to attend a retreat mm -hmm. or to have some working experience in a retreat. Yeah. I think that can be super helpful because that's going to have you understand how this works, how this retreat world work. And uh, for me, this was a key um, experience. Mm -hmm. You know, before I run my retreat, because I I've worked in retreats and I and I knew what was that about. I was I had the possibility of attending some of the classes of the teachers who were coming there. I was also like working in the environment. So it, I quickly understood the whole system of retreats. And that was for me, that was, I think, like a, almost like an accelerator experience, you know, that really helped me understand that I could run my own retreats in the, in the future. So either you can find a work experience if that's a possibility, but if it's not a possibility, perhaps you can invest and uh, spend some holidays with your favorite yoga teacher in a retreat, you know? Absolutely. It's so important because it really just shows you firsthand experience, what it's all about, what things you need to organize, what how it works when people arrive, what mm -hmm. happens if something doesn't go to plan, if someone cancels or well, maybe not that, but if someone, if there's an accident in terms of the accommodation and safety. So it's really important to get into that experience yourself or have that experience so that you can also see what you like, what you don't like, what you want to do, what you don't want to do or would do differently. So absolutely, really exactly. great point. That, that's, that's also a great point, you know, what you like, but also what you don't like, what mm -hmm. you would never do in your retreat. You know, sometimes <laughs> we have those experiences that are not great. Um, I had in the past, you know, that I might have attended some kind of retreat or some kind of classes that, you know, there were things that didn't resonate with me, but actually I didn't see that, that as a, you know, lost time or loss opportunity or something it's something that actually i'm like well if one day i run a retreat i'm sure i'm not gonna do that you know <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah we can learn from everything we learn from everything whether it be positive or negative everything that you see learn is a learning opportunity mm -hmm. right Correct. yeah so after going to retreats or going to a retreat yourself what are some key points to consider? Yeah, so another key point, Ani, here would be to connect with different retreat locations already, mm -hmm. even though if you have never run a retreat before, but you're planning to, you can also start connecting, searching for those locations, connecting with them and asking them questions. Ask them questions such as, you know, whether or not they require a, a deposit, whether or not they are going to be able to promote your retreat, perhaps in their website, perhaps they do have a page in where they can, people can find your, your retreat. There are so many questions that you can be asking to these locations, also for you to understand what are also the requirements from your side. Mm -hmm. For instance, some might requ may require a deposit. Some locations may require a deposit. And then that means that, say, if you want to book, if you are planning to run a retreat and you are planning to bring, say, 12 people, perhaps the location, they're going to ask you right away to reserve your rooms, paying the, say, 25% of the total cost. So that means that you need to have some money there that you can that you can for it's almost like an investment that you need to put forward. Mm -hmm. 
some other locations may may have a different system. For example, I know some locations, the other system that they have, they may not require a deposit, but they may require that you already have some people yeah. who are ready to jump in. They are ready to sign to sign up for your retreat. So all of these are questions you want to know. You mm -hmm. want to connect with those locations and you know and tell them, hey, I I'm I'm looking, you know, I'm looking for locations. I would like to run a retreat. And many of them, they probably already have a brochure or some sort of uh, document that they will send it your way mm -hmm. so that you can understand how that works. Exactly. I think what you're saying already kind of answers ideal questions. You she she's asking blah, blah, blah. approximately what percentage of the money people pay goes to the retreat place in your experience? And when you invite other teachers, how does that work? She would like to know the financial aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so much yeah. on where you go. Correct. Correct. It depends so much on where you go. Some places, um, it's, yeah, it's not like, you know, I was looking into this and uh, for instance, I know that is this kind of fixed price uh, in some cities or in some locations for yoga studios or for workshops. For yeah. instance, when I was teaching uh, workshops here in Bangkok in the past, I remember like a kind of the, the rule of thumb, uh, the rule of thumb, so to speak here was like 60, 40, 60 yeah. for the teacher, 40 for the studio, which was great. But with retreats is totally a different story because it will, there is a, such a huge range of, um, uh, you know, products, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So uh, such a huge range of locations um hotels um retreats it's it's you need to to go and ask the 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 center itself yeah. how much it's is it going to cost yeah and how much how how everything is organized because as i said before they they might have this way in which they give you a price and then you prepare the package for your retreat exactly. and they tell you okay you need to pay me this quantity per person per day and then on the top of that you may add your own expenses uh your your salary whatever you want to get from this retreat and any other expenses that you may have that may be an option or perhaps on, on another case perhaps they do not require that deposit but because they ask you to have at least a few number of people in mm -hmm. that case if they take the if they are the person that that are taking the bookings perhaps they also may assign a quantity that is going for the teacher do you mm -hmm. know what i mean absolutely so you need to ask all of these things you always things. need to ask and i think depending on the type of location you want to go to also also makes a big difference because there are retreat centers that have like the space to practice yoga, the space to have your meals and also offer accommodation. Yeah. But then you've got centers that only have the space to practice yoga and accommodation is organized elsewhere. So for example, Dagmar, she, she used to have, Dagmar is one of the guests on the summit. She, her interviews on the platform. She used to have a retreat center in Costa Rica, never asked for a deposit as long as she knew people would actually go there. And then another lady that was on the, on the summit, Lisa, she's got a retreat organization and she helps you organize everything, but she also helps you organize other activities. So apart from yoga, the space and accommodation, maybe you go on a hike, maybe you give, go visit some waterfalls, whatever it is. So depending on where and who, and the type of accommodation or location, I think, like you said, ask. Ask, exactly. Yeah. Go there and ask because every, every place is different. And uh, any questions that you have, you know, they're going to be uh, happy to, I hope, <laughs> they're happy to reply any questions that, they, that you have. Uh, yeah. Because this is how, how it should be, yeah. Yeah, usually they're happy because it's business for them too, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 
yeah mm -hmm. they usually are very happy to reply <laughs> and then the other thing that i want to share and this summarize the the third point in the things that we can do in the medium long term money it's yeah. to go there and check the location yourself if you can <laughs> fantastic <laughs> fantastic and let me tell you something also ask this because perhaps they do have a special promotion for you knowing that you are a potential retreat leader knowing that you may bring business to to their hotel to their retreat center perhaps they do have a special promotion perhaps they do have a you know a thing that they do for teachers who who are potential retreat leaders who want to come to the retreat mm -hmm. and if that is the case if you have that opportunity that is great because you're gonna have a feeling of the place and you're also gonna have an amazing opportunity to take some content already and to create some buzz around that, you know, <laughs> just like, oh my God, I'm here in this location. It's great. I'm planning to run a retreat here. And that already is going to start creating some excitement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is really great. Now, you said if it's possible, right? If it's possible, go visit this location. What do you do if it's not possible? Well, if it's not possible, what I would do, I would try to keep the communication channels super open with their retreat. And as I say, call them, you know, arrange a call with them. If it's possible, mm -hmm. like a video call like you and I are doing right now. So you get to meet the person who is in charge of organizing this. Mm -hmm. And as I say, ask them as many questions as you have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, so this is a little bit about now, the medium term, or what you can do to prepare yourself to actually think of how am I going to do all of this. I would really list out all the questions that you have and maybe create a document on your, on your computer or whatever device, so that whenever you see a location that could be suitable, you've got your questions ready and prepared as well, yeah? So long term, then what do we do okay. after? <laughs> <laughs> All right, long term. So let's say when I when I roll long term, I was like kind of thinking like, OK, long term is that the moment that I am ready, the moment that I have done all of these things and the moment that I'm, you know, I do have the location. I do understand everything, how it works. I save up some money to pay the deposit. If that is the thing that, that it requires and everything. So now it's time to to kind of start planning or almost planning my retreat right mm -hmm. so the the one of the things that you can start doing at that point is to start teasing your community with the idea which is something that we say you could do once you're there if you have the opportunity to go to the to the retreat center yeah uh you can you can do that you can start uh teasing your community remember that we have all of these people in which we have created some relationship with we have the email address or we have it on a whatsapp group or whatever so we can start telling them that we are looking to to spend some time together in this beautiful place and uh, that is going to start to create a little bit of curiosity with the people that uh, that have been that are somehow connected to you mm -hmm. Um, I'm still there, right? I'm not because I think my computer is a little bit funny right now. Yeah, you are. Okay, okay. We can hear you perfectly. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So that's that's let's say that's one of the things that uh, you would do. Um, another thing, Annie, which I think it's important, and sometimes we may feel a little bit intimidated because. You know, we have so many ideas. Uh, we may feel a little bit overwhelmed. You know, I have all of these ideas. What do I do? What do I do? What is going to be best for my students? What is going to be best for my audience? What I would recommend here also is to ask your community and your audience for some ideas. Yeah. I know sometimes for some teachers, this may feel like, oh my God, they, they may feel like they're on the spot or they don't know enough for something but actually it's quite the opposite it's mm -hmm. like kind of inviting your community to the you know to the party and say hey i have this idea in my mind that i've been thinking for a long time you know if you would be interested would you would you let me know what dates would work for you 
even what theme, you know, even what kind of theme would you like this retreat to be about? Because as you say before, there are so many ideas in which you can run a retreat. And of course, if you're a yoga teacher, I'm sure you want to have the yoga element there. Yeah. <laughs> but also some of my my most successful retreats when I run my, when I run my own retreats here in Thailand, they were a combination of yoga and something else. Mm -hmm. Yoga and fitness, yoga and uh, food and nutrition, stuff like that, you know? Um, that is something that, uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but, uh, you know, you could partner up with someone else, with some teacher, perhaps that has some other expertise and, uh, and you could bring that to your audience, bring that to your students and say, Hey, I have this idea, or perhaps you have another idea. Is there anything that you would like to work in particular during a retreat? And they might give you so much valuable ideas for that. Mm -hmm. I really like that you mentioned this and I would like to, to say a few things about this as well because so often teachers have an idea, they work it out, they create all their contents, they make sure that everything is ready to go and then tell their students about it. So they're not really including them in the process. <laughs> I'm, gu I'm guilty of that, yes. I am I too, do. I am too. But that's one of the reasons that we are here because we want you to not do that. It's a big mistake because if no one knows about it, if no one knows what you're doing and if you're not validating your ideas, you're really missing out on the opportunities to create the offering, and in this case, it's a retreat, but it's the same for when you write a course or a workshop or whatever else, you really miss out on the opportunity to design it exactly to what they are looking for. And if you design something the way that they really envision their dream retreat, they are way more likely to actually invest in it and go on the retreat with you. So it's so important to include your community in the process of creating as well yeah i'm guilty of that you know sometimes that you get we get into our little you know like a little creation laboratory zone. creation space and we're like oh my god they're gonna love it and then you know because you didn't ask for anything perhaps yeah. it's something that if they experience they would love it but perhaps there is something around it that doesn't click and it could be even the wording you know even the name you are the words you are using to to name that retreat yeah. at the end during your retreat you can teach whatever you want but sometimes it's also important to to understand you know what is that that your audience is needing or how are even talking about the the experience that they want so that mm -hmm. you can use that I've got a great example of this because I'm looking for retreats. I would really love to go on a retreat very soon. And I was just having a look at like, what is it called again? Retreat? No. Um, book yoga retreats. Book yoga retreats. Exactly. And I was having a look there and there was this amazing retreat that had all the things that I absolutely love. Like there was a focus on astrology and Ayurveda and yoga, meditation. But the way it was like seven day out of your home or something. And I thought, this doesn't really reflect what you are teaching there. It's such a shame because if you include the themes or the names of the things that you're going to do or offer, you'll be able to attract so many more people. So speak to your community, find out what they want. And include this as well in your messaging or when you start to promote it. And I think that really is the next step, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. That brings us to the next step, which is basically we were talking about promoting within our community. That's the first thing, but also promote it on different audiences and, and other audiences outside of your community. And yeah. this is where perhaps you know some of you may this is when when it's super important to have that online space that we were talking at the beginning of this conversation having this online presence so to speak and this could be as we say anything 
but it's also an opportunity to to think about you know how can i promote this outside of the people that i'm normally teaching and perhaps it would be worth it to invest into some marketing you were mentioning book yoga retreats which is a website that you know can be super helpful for that those are things that also it's important to consider the moment you are like almost uh, ready to to plan your retreat mm -hmm. yeah absolutely this is amazing yeah. i think it has so much value and great insights for those that are watching any questions write them in the chat we'd love to hear your questions because as you imagine now or as you can hear now there's so many things to think about so many time that go so much time that go in, goes into your preparation um, Manu, is there anything else that you would like to add to the processes we've been through already? So far, so far, I think, I think, no, I think that's okay. Um, we are like kind of um, approaching now the moment when, when we have it very clear that we're going to do that retreat in that place and that we already have the people. And, um, but so far, I think these are the things that, for sure are, are important to look at. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So what is it then that happens next, maybe when you are approaching the date of the retreat or preparing yourself to go there and actually start teaching? Okay, amazing. So ideally, <laughs> and I say ideally because, uh, you know, like it, it may not happen, but I would say give yourself enough time at least give yourself six months i would say six months but not six months to like not that i'm gonna run a retreat six months and i start planning today no like you have everything ready basically today and your retreat starts in six months mm -hmm. so why do i say that and in my experience i'm gonna tell you something some people are not many people actually are not going to book six months in advance but it's good for them to know um i think i think it was talking with you honey a couple of weeks ago when you you were saying like how people like to plan their year they have a life they they want to to plan around so it's good to give them time but also you know it's like um it's 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 also a way to keep bringing them the idea again and again and again if you have like six months you're gonna have a lot of time to do marketing which is gonna be important if you want your retreat to be sold to other people outside of of your community outside of the people that you already have that sign up yeah absolutely this is a really great point because I think some people here in the community have asked, can I just organize my treat and, and then host it next month? And ooh, that's going to be a lot of stress for you, yeah, I believe, yeah. just organizing that. But in terms of promotion and actually having people joining you, like you said, people have a life, they've got to work, they, they need to be able to get the, that time off work as well. Or maybe they've got a family life and they need to arrange times with their partners. Mm -hmm. or with other family members and maybe their children have to go to school so they can't go during the school the, the school year so there's a lot of things that we need to well a lot of time periods really that we need to take into account of the people visiting you but also to actually help you prepare and feel rested when you arrive because okay. then is when it really starts um yeah. absolutely yeah um, yeah, I've seen, I was thinking about this, Annie, because I've seen people, I've seen some um, retreat leaders who have a very large audience who are like very successful and they may do a retreat three months in advance and they sell it. But for most yoga teachers, that's not the case. And I would say one month, forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one month, it's just too much, too much stress. Yeah. And, and too short of a gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what are other steps and that will help you prepare before or during that time? 
Okay, so here there is a lot. Like we could do another live some other day if you yeah. want, honey. I do have I do have a blog that I wrote in my it's in my website, but it's in Spanish, mm -hmm. and it basically speaks about all of the things you would need to do during this, uh, you know, during this period right before the retreat. But that would be for another life. So what I'm gonna say now, we're gonna jump. Let's say that you know you already are in your retreat. It is the moment to teach your retreat. There you are. So what's really really important, and what are the things that you would need to think about now? One of them is to be present. You know, this requires a lot of work for many months. You've been preparing this. It's the time. It's the time for your people to be there to spend some time with you. So stay present with them. And very, very important, enjoy the time. Yeah. Enjoy the time with them because this is such a this is such an important aspect of the experience. During the retreat, it may work different for different teachers. Some teachers prefer to stay a little bit more private and not to mingle so much, so to speak, with their group. Mm -hmm. And personally, I'm the opposite. I really like to, <laughs> to spend time with, with the guests, you know, and I really like to even like, you know, organize dinners with them and spend like free time with them. But whatever you choose to do, it's fine. This is totally up to you. It's totally up to the dynamic of the group. But also make sure that you've been planning for a long time. You've been working hard preparing this experience. Make sure that during that, those few days, that week, whatever it is that lasts the retreat, you also have time to enjoy the place, to teach, you are there for teaching and also enjoying the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. It's such a shame as well if you can't enjoy it because there are still things to organize or you have to plan your classes or you're just really burned out from only organizing everything so that you, when you are there, can't hold the space that you really wish for that you want or that you've promised even to the people that are joining you absolutely yeah yeah exactly and you know for sure there's gonna be some little glitches here and there because this is yeah this is how it works you know people are traveling they're gonna reach the hotel there's gonna be some mm, delays and there's gonna be some little problem here there that's normal and especially over the first one or two days mm -hmm. but you know if you kind of have that mindset of you know we're gonna have a good time we're gonna enjoy and all of that that's gonna help too mm -hmm. fantastic absolutely i couldn't agree with you more mm -hmm. so how does everyone feel i see there's still a lot of you watching how do you feel about this write down if you have any questions write down in the chat in the comments in the comments of facebook if you've got any questions about this in the meantime, while we're waiting for the questions to come in, Manu, do you have other things, ideas, comments that you would like to share? Yes. That's, that's, this is another point that I want to share. And, and of course, again, Annie, we're going to plan for another live on retreats and we want to talk about okay. all about the retreat itself. But Amazing. One, <laughs> but one of the key points here one of the key points while you are running the retreat it's that towards the last few days or towards the last day propose dates for the next year for the next retreat you know because that is going to be the moment when they are like super high you know they have been spending one week with you whatever that is they've been in that beautiful location they are like oh my gosh they went through that transformation and they want more and not only that they also want to bring their best friend or their partner or whatever so towards the end of your experience towards the end of your retreat say hey we are planning to we're planning to do this thing next year or in six months or whatever and uh yeah that's a good opportunity to already sell the spots you know absolutely do you think this is just something I think of the, on the top of my head? Do you think it would be wise to already take deposits at that point? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if it's you, possible. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's possible and, you know, people are going to be, they're going to be more ready than ever in that moment you know and um, if you have it very clear that you have that time 
for the following, you know, for the next retreat that you have that time available and that you can already start taking bookings, you know, go ahead and take the deposit for them so that they can secure their spot. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. All right. Let me see in the chat. We've got one more comment. Maybe doing a retreat in October is too soon. Mm. Um, it, de it depends, as I said before, if, yeah. if they have a very big audience and a very big audience of they have a very group of people that they teach and they propose the idea and, and they are ready to jump in. I would say, you know, if you have a minimum number of people and that it's going to make it a profitable venture in October and you can do it, you know. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I still want to say like there is so much to do, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so many things. Yeah, yeah, because you still need to coordinate all of that with the hotel and everything. I think October, if you know the place, and and you have taught before in that place if you have the people yeah. and they are ready to sign up in that case then i would say yes but no less than that yeah exactly but i think she's got sarah you've got a location don't you i will be at my home in mallorca in the middle of october i will do a work on the morning routine helping people i can have six people have you already got these people have they signed up already? I just realized <laughs> this is funny. And I think it's because of the mic. The whole time Manu was saying, <laughs> sorry, the whole time Manu was saying honey, I heard it as honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> honey. I think it's because of my accent, maybe. <laughs> no, I think it's because of the mic. I heard <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That's okay, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I can call you honey too, right? Yeah, you don't mind. I'll take that. <laughs> you don't mind that. Okay. Okay. So Sarah, <laughs> let us know. Do you have these people already signed up, or do you still need to get them? Is that the amount of people that you're allowed to have, or that you can um, have space for? Um, I do remember that I think it was ideal earlier and she asked about getting teachers, other teachers joining your retreat. And I, I do remember that I just I ideal see. earlier. See the video here. Um, mm, 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 mm. When you invite other teachers, how does that work? She's asking um when you invite other teachers this is some of the points that i want to talk uh, also well i have the the last three points that i want to share to, with you today annie and uh, yeah. and one of them is to plan the your retreat with some more experienced retreat leader which i think it's a great idea if it's the first time that you're running your retreat and uh, you know someone who has run retreats in the past and you want to plan with them or invite them to to teach with you i think that is super great mm -hmm. however i would say if that is the case make sure that you have some some previous working experience or some collaboration experience with that person yeah. because obviously you don't want to have surprise during that week when the retreat is happening like perhaps there is no like a um, sanity between you and the other teacher and um, I think it's great I think it's great to invite other teachers as we mentioned before also to make it a little bit more interesting to make mm -hmm. the, the whole package more interesting they could be yoga teachers so they could be completely different professionals you could invite healer you could you could invite a, a fitness trainer you could invite a nutritionist depends on what you want to include but I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I really like that you said, make sure that you've got a previous collaboration or you kind of know, know them already so that you, you, you also want to kind of feel connected and know that you're in the same headspace mm -hmm. and that both of you are paying the same type of time into organizing everything because in the end you're it's a group project then for you two, right? Or three or four, how many teachers you want to do this with. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, to make sure that, you know, everyone is um, 
you know, you work well together. It's a nice workflow and that you have, you know, different responsibilities so that everyone is working towards the goal. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Common efforts. Common efforts, correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't see other questions coming in, but Manu, you said you have more points. You've got three points. You said two more points. Yeah, I have the last two. Well, one of them we already talked about it, which is the to explore the paid channels for promotion. And one of them we talk right. about book yoga retreats. It's mm -hmm. a there are I know there are many different websites nowadays. Book yoga retreat is just one of them, but there are so many yoga websites that can help you. Yeah um come help help your retreat to be to be found by people mm -hmm. and then the last thing that i want to share with with you and your audience today honey honey <laughs> 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 the last thing that i want to share is to ask for help if they are not clear if they they have some questions you know there are some people like you or i who will be uh, able to help, you know? This mm -hmm. is a big project, a retreat is something that takes um, a lot of uh, thinking, a lot of organizing and preparing. And I would say, if you do feel that you have some questions, you know, connect with someone, some yoga teacher that you know that has some experience that has worked or run retreats in the past and, you know, and, and ask for help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's really great advice because especially if you're doing this for the first time, there are so many things to think about and a lot of things that you will learn through experience. But if in any way you can prevent yourself from dealing with challenges that are unexpected or, I don't know, dealing with things that you really not, never thought of before, like what can happen at the location in terms of cancellation, safety, accommodation, all of the things that you need to be present, like a, a kitchen or whatever it is, props for your yoga classes, all of those things are, it's, it, it's handy to make a list, but definitely ask for help if you're new to this and don't really know where to start, just to prevent yourself from unexpected surprises. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I just remember also, Annie, that I have in my, because someone was asking about the financial side and the pricing yeah. and everything. I just recorded a reel a few weeks ago on my Instagram, Emprendedores del Yoga. One of the last reels that I have, I'm talking about the, the money side of the retreat, how okay. to plan yeah, the pricing, about the pricing. That's fantastic. So for those that don't know you or they don't follow you already, they don't know what you're, where you are, everything is under the name Emprendedores del Yoga, right? Correct. <laughs> Correct. I know it's a very, it's a little <laughs> bit difficult name for non-Spanish speaker yoga teachers. Basically, it means... That. Basically, it means yoga entrepreneurs in Spanish. And uh, basically, they can find everything about me in my website, emprendedoresdelyoga.com. Uh, I do have a Spanish podcast. I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus right now. I'm taking a little break from the podcast. But there are like around 70 episodes in which, you know, we talk all about um, uh, entrepreneurship and yoga. Mm -hmm. And... Um, English speaking channels, the one that I'm more active at the moment, uh, it's my Instagram, but of course I also have my newsletter, which I encourage everyone to, <laughs> to join if, if you want to keep uh, in touch with me. Uh, you can find everything through my Instagram. There is a link in my bio and there is, um, you have access there to my newsletter and some freebies and stuff. Mm -hmm. I have tagged you in the Facebook group so people can find you as well. And all of the links will be in the interview description. So have a look at that too. It's fantastic. Manu, thank you so much. Thank you so My much pleasure. for clarifying all the things that we need to know about hosting retreats. My pleasure. I hope it was helpful. Yes, it definitely was.